As we talked about earlier, Michigan and Syracuse are hours away from their Final Four showdown in Atlanta. We'll find out if the Syracuse defense can slow down Trey Burke and the Wolverines offense. Let's send it out to our Tom Lydon and Brad Galley, who are live in Atlanta for us, us tonight. And guys, a lot of talk about whether Michigan's offense can really hang with that Syracuse defense. They're pretty tough. That really has been the talk throughout the week. Syracuse's defense has been absolutely stifling throughout this NCAA tournament. Unfortunately, this Marquette grad saw this Syracuse defense Thanks. knock your team out of the tournament. And Marquette had been playing very well. I don't say that to anger you. I say that to make the point that Marquette was very playing very well, an explosive offense themselves, and Syracuse was even able to slow them down. And this is a Michigan team with an offense a lot of people are saying has been clicking at the right time. You look at Trey Burke, the player of the year, by basically every media outlet and every award ceremony this past week. Week, but the key to Michigan's offense has been Mitch McGarry and the way that they've been able to get him more involved in this offense. But Syracuse has so many advantages when you look at maybe just the roster and things on paper. After so many people tore apart the Michigan offense against the Syracuse defense, Syracuse helped out the media yesterday by becoming a little bit more mouthy with their sound bites. Not really showing Michigan a whole heck of a lot of respect in what they were saying. No, they did. And then when you look at what how they responded, Michigan said, hey, you know, they can say what they want to say, but they're talking about us as if we don't even exist. They're just worrying about their own game and maybe that is a little mental thing to get into a young team's head that's certainly something Jim Bayheim teams have done in the past to kind of just focus on themselves and let the Wolverines worry on their own but in the end it does come down to which team executes on the court so the question is what's Michigan going to do to try to penetrate this Syracuse defense I don't think it's going to come down to who has this who's the size difference or size or whatever it's going to come down to who playing with the most heart and most passion and I mean, that's how we got here. It's going to be tough trying to guard them um, just because, you know, they do have some, some guys that are bigger in certain positions. But, you know, it's the Final Four. If you're not playing without there, if you're not out there playing with heart um, and desire and a matter of will, then you, you shouldn't be here. In many ways, I think it's going to come down to just how well Michigan can slow down Syracuse's transition offense because they do play the zone. The guards are deeper down the court and in a yep. position to take the ball and get a fast break started. So if Michigan can slow that down, I think that'll give them a better chance. The attitude of this Michigan team is so reflective, as so many people have pointed out, to that Final Four team of years past with the Fab Five, the last time Michigan was here in this situation. And the comparisons have been made, maybe with the attitude, the swagger of this young team being able to overcome you know, the early hype early in the season when they were ranked number one and then faltering and then now building themselves back up and so many people now saying you know Jimmy King will be in the house will Chris Weber reach out today he reaches out on Twitter and says it's your time now putting out a picture of, uh, of the group of players on this team it'd be interesting to see you know, how they react to this and the players talking about all about the comparisons Tom and and the correlation between these two teams Obviously, all, all year long, we've kind of heard the Fab Five comparison, or whatever, just because I mean, we got the number one number one ranking at one point, and um, I mean, Mission Basketball is kind of like back this year, what they were saying. But uh, we've been trying to just go away from that comparison and trying to start um, our own brand or, or whatever you may call it. Glad to be here my freshman year, and for us five freshmen to do it in this program to get back at this level where, where we want to be is just a tremendous accomplishment. There'll be some attention on the coaching staffs as well. John Beeline making this trip to the Final Four for the first time. Jim Beheim has been here three times, and he is undefeated in national semifinal games. He won in 1987, he won in 1996, and he won in 2003, which he then followed up with a win of the championship game for his only national title. So experience may become a factor, and, yeah. and beheim has been there. So many people talk about the experience, what it means to be here, and I thought about asking that question there yesterday, but I think this, Nick Stauskas would have scolded me when we were in the regional <laughs> final. He goes, you know, all this talk about being young, it's bogus. And that word has just really stuck with me. And if you look at the tournament, the way college basketball is, age isn't really a factor anymore, but it will definitely show tonight. And I think, like you said, it's going to come down to who executes their game plan better and exudes their will. And this is a team with a, with a great offense in Michigan and a team with a great defense in Syracuse. It'll be a fun one to watch. It's going to be a great one to watch. We will have all the postgame reaction for you as soon as this one ends. Reporting live from Atlanta, for Brad Galley, I'm Tom Lydon. 7 Action Sports. Let's send it back to the studio.